All right, uh, once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us uh, continue our discussion in uh, chapter four of our subject matter, uh, comparative models of uh, polarizing. So we have discussed last time uh, the UNPOL or United Nations uh, Police, which is one of the international uh, policing cooperation and uh, initiatives uh, that were made in order to uh, help uh, its members against uh, transnational crimes and uh, providing uh, law enforcement assistance for the uh, effectivity of uh, a host uh, state uh, law enforcement of all policing body. Okay. So do not forget what uh, has been discussed last time. And now uh, we will discuss uh, other international uh, uh, policing uh, uh, organization that is the result of uh, cooperation by uh, the global community. And the discussion will focus on uh, uh, a very popular uh, international organization with 195 uh, member countries or state around the world. So, hinikita niya ang uh, United Nations, no? ang IAC, I, ICPO, or International uh, Criminal Police Organization. In short, they call it, uh, you know, the telegraphic address for ICPO is Interpol. Yan yung alam natin, Interpol. Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, stand by and let us uh, proceed uh, for you to more understand what is all about uh, uh, the Interpol, which is a very popular one, which you can see in some movies and uh, other international uh, organizations. No. Okay. All right, so uh, as you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we shall continue our discussion on chapter four and we shall discuss uh, the ICPO uh, or uh, in short, uh, it is known as Interpol. No? So ICPO again stands for International uh, Criminal uh, Police Organization. It is a global organization which, is, uh, which can provide platform for cooperation, enable police to work directly with their counterparts, even between countries which do not have diplomatic relations. ICPO is considered the, the world's largest uh, international uh, police organization with 195 member countries as of this year. Its role is to enable police around the world to work together to make the world a safer place. Uh, the Interpol have high-tech uh, infrastructure of technical and operational support that helps meet the growing challenges of fighting crime in the 21st century. As you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, is the ICPO logo. And again, the logo or the emblem represents the organization. This is the symbol of the organization. As you can see, Interpol. But remember this, in every logo or emblem, it has its meaning. So let us see. The elements of the ICPO logo is the globe, as you, uh, as you have uh, seen a while ago. The globe indicates the uh, Interpol activities is worldwide. The olive branches symbolizes peace. The scales symbolizing justice. Uh, the vertical sword symbolizing police action. And of course, at the bottom is the name Interpol, of course, the name of the organization. And there is the abbreviation ICPO and its French equivalent OIPC. 
So it's your assignment, what is OIPC that is French for ICPO. Okay? So once again, I hope you know the meaning of the sword, the OIPC, the ICPO, the Interpol, the SPAIL, no? So don't forget that. The next topic is, is ICPO? Is ICPO considered an international or police organization or police force? Is ICPO or Interpol a police force or organization? The answer is Interpol is not uh, a police force because it is the machinery for international police cooperation and communication. Uh, the principles on which Interpol's functioning space have stood the best time. So remember this, ang Interpol is in this uh, police force because ang isang police force like the PNP have the power to function, to act uh, moto proprio. Or in other words, uh, when there is an incident happen, they have the authority to uh, action or uh, have the jurisdiction to move and uh, do its function. Pero the Interpol or inter ICPO, wala silang ganong power no, to just uh, do uh, or make initiative to make an action or police action. no. So as mentioned here, it is an international police cooperation. So if a member country needs the assistance of the Interpol, then that's the time that the Interpol will make an action. So it is, uh, you know, it is an organization of police forces, but it is not a police force because it has no uh, police power to make its own uh, action. In other words, ang Interpol lang ay gagalaw if there is uh, a request for assistance, no? By its member countries. So do not forget that. ICPO or Interpol, a police force, it is clear, this is a continuation, that the organization cannot have teams of detectives with supranational powers who travel around investigating cases in different countries. As I said, Wallace well, Young Police Power and jurisdiction over all the countries and they will just go there to China and arrest one. No. Uh, uh, the Interpol will only provide assistance through its members. No? Yeah, so example, pag may gusto tayong arrestuhin sa China na tumakas papuntang China, then uh, the Interpol will coordinate to China as a member of Interpol then China will be the one to uh, arrest the person and turn over it to the Philippines, okay? Yeah, so more on coordination and uh, assistance if needed. So Interpol as not a police force, international police cooperation is the coordinated action of the member countries, police forces, all which supply and request information and services. Yan yung sinasabi ko kanina, na ang Interpol is not a police force because hindi siya, wala siyang power to just go to China and arrest a person, to go to America and arrest a person. The Interpol is just an organization uh, that stands as a coordinated organization wherein when there is a need from one member, then the Interpol will act as a, a coordinator and inform this country or member country to help the requesting party for whatever law enforcement assistance, okay? Then, uh, also, it is very important for you to understand the uh, uh, Interpol's uh, crime areas or uh, focus, you know? So, number one is corruption. Corruption is one of the major area of concern of Interpol. So, kung nangangailangan ng assistance ang isang country to combat corruption, then Interpol is much willing to assist. No? Because corruption is everywhere and a problem of uh, the world. Remember this, uh, ang pagtatago ng corruption ngayon, 
ng government officials is naitatago nila yan through uh, uh, bank uh, strategies. No? Pwede silang magbanko sa ibang country para itago yung kanilang pera. So, the Interpol can assist the detection of it. No? Uh, also, one focus is crime against children. Uh, that is in relation to trafficking of children. You know, children are uh, the vulnerable, the weakest uh, member of the community worldwide that are uh, susceptible as victims of uh, crimes such as trafficking. So that is one focus of uh, Interpol to assist its member. Then also cybercrime. Cybercrime is at this very moment is rampant because of uh, the information technology because of the massive spread of internet cybercrime is also a fastest growing areas of crime no yeah ito yung isa na kahit na sa america yung criminal it may commit crime in the philippines just like one case of uh, a filipino in 2004 or in the late 2000 uh, hinak niya yung uh, uh, system ng america uh, the so-called, uh, he used the so-called I love you virus. But during that time, there is no law in the Philippines that, punishing, uh, that punishes cybercrime. That is why he was not prosecuted. But try to see the point is the criminal can commit crime even he is not uh, in the actual place where the crime is uh, uh, committed. No? So... Uh, isang example yan ng transnational crime. So without the assistance of the international community, then may hirapan tayo to enforce the law and to arrest the person. Next is drugs. Of course, uh, drugs is, uh, you know, a very popular and dangerous uh, problem or crime because it may affect uh, two or more countries. No? Ito yung isa sa pinakasikat na crime no that is why uh, as mentioned uh, before in the united nations meron silang isang unit to na tinawag na UNODC that will uh, specialize in the investigation of uh, drug related crimes okay so remember drug trade and its associated problem continue to grow in most parts of the world environmental crime is one also Environmental crime is, uh, you know, it is a problem today because uh, nasisira ng kapaligiran at mga uh, uh, endangered species natin because of uh, environmental crimes. You know, these are all for profit, no? Mostly for profit. Hmm. Then also financial crimes uh, are often referred as white collar crimes. Yeah. Uh, uso na ngayon yan because of uh, cryptocurrency no? and using of uh, the internet to transact money no? uh, dito papasok ang money laundering no? money laundering sa atin sa Philippines then firearms yeah. so firearms is used by terrorists and of course uh, firearms is smuggling uh, that is a threat because pag maraming pumasok sa Pilipinas na baril, yan yung nagagamit ng mga terrorists. Okay? Then there is money also in firearm trafficking. Then of course, uh, fugitive investigation. Yan yung sinasabi natin. Pag ang isang tao dahil uh, isi ng mag-access or mag-travel uh, around the world, nakakatakas ang mga tao from the Philippines to other countries. Of course, as we mentioned, mahirap na tayong pupunta sa ibang country to arrest a person. So, by virtue of the Interpol assistance, then we can uh, detect and arrest the person. No? So, I hope you know what are fugitives. Fugitives are people who are uh, uh, running away from uh, uh, their uh, obligation when they violated the law. No? Operational support is also given, number nine. No, maritime piracy is a global reach. They can uh, provide assistance. Yeah, Interpol have taken the lead in providing international community with operational support necessary to bring end to maritime 
privacy, especially on maritime piracy. No, then organized crime. Yeah, organized crime is committed by uh, two or more uh, individuals who come together. No, in mga syndicate. Mahirap it take ang syndicate and global ang metro niyan. Maraming connection ang mga yan. Kaya mahirap it take ang mga yan because they are organized. No. Uh, people who are within the organized crime are people of high intellect and uh, high connections. No, so they even commit corruption of public officials just to hide and protect the operation. All right. Then also pharmaceutical uh, crime. Yeah, eh, anti pharmaceutical. Yung mga gamot na yan na naka counterfeit yan. Kaya sometimes may mga peking gamot sa merkado na yun ay ginagawa ng mga organized crime group also. No? Pharmaceutical crimes. Also, we have terrorism. So, connected ang mga ito sa isa't isa. No? Sabi ko kanina, yung baril, pag nagpuslit ng baril sa Pilipinas, without proper documentation, then uh, it may be used by this terrorist group. No? Yeah. And we have the law on terrorism. No? I hope you know that terrorism is a crime. Trafficking in human beings. Yeah, trafficking in human beings is a multi-billion dollar form of international organized crime constituting modern day slavery. Yeah, so human trafficking, there is also a law in the Philippines that punishes that. Victims are recruited, you know, so human trafficking, uh, deception is the number one element. You are deceiving the person. No, you are promising a good and legal job in other countries or in some places, but it turned out na different pala. Ginagawang slave ang tao or sex worker. Another is trafficking of uh, illegal goods and counterfeiting uh, of goods. Yeah, okay. mm. yeah. Uso yan. Illicit goods. Uh, sinabing illicit goods, they have no proper uh, documentation bago pumasok sa isang lugar. Then yung mga smuggle. Then also including counterfeit. No, all these are imitated uh, uh, products. Uso yan, even agricultural products are counterfeited. And also uh, not documented. That's why it is illicit. Okay? So do not forget that. That is a problem. Vehicle crime. Ang mga smuggled goods, mga vehicles na pasok sa country din natin and other countries. Yeah. And works of art, even arts are being uh, subject to the commission of crime kasi there is money still in the counterfeiting uh, works of art. No? And those are the uh, 16 no? primary areas of concern of the Interpol and they provide assistance for it. So remember this, Interpol shall comprise as an organization. We have to understand that Interpol have composition as an organization, okay? Uh, and this organization plays the vital role in implementing the uh, function of Interpol and uh, addressing these problems as mentioned a while ago. So we have the General Assembly, the Executive Committee, the General Secretariat, the NCB and advisors. So ito yung uh, composition uh, Interpol as an organization. So let us further understand. No, as you can see, uh, the executive committee, the general assembly, the national central bureau, advisors, and the general secretariat. So ang pinakamataas is general assembly, the executive committee, and followed by general secretariat. Yung NCB na yan, ito yung contact point na lahat ng members kung meron silang kailangan na assistance, then they can contact and use their NCB. So ang NCB na sa isang country o pag ang Philippines, meron tayong sariling NCB. Yan yung contact natin sa Interpol, sa General Secretariat. Okay? So ang General Assembly is the Interpol Supreme Governing Body. It is comprising of representative from each of the member countries. So, pag meron tayong representative to the Interpol and they will be a part of the General Assembly. So, General Assembly is meets once a year. No? 
The General Assembly, uh, each member country may be represented by one or several delegates. So ang tawag natin sa pinadala natin to the General Assembly in the Interpol, we call them as delegates. Uh, this General Assembly elects the members of the Executive Committee and appoint the Secretary General who will head the General Secretariat and who will propose the appointment of the Executive the appointment of the general secretary general, it is the executive committee. So who elects the members of the executive committee? It is the general assembly. Who will appoint the secretary general of Interpol? It is the general assembly. Who will recommend the appointment of the secretary general? It is the executive committee. This is the Interpol's governing body, which provides guidance and direction in the between sessions of the assembly. It is the executive committee, which is responsible for the general secretariat overseeing its day-to-day -day activities and ensuring that it implements the decision of the general assembly and the executive committee is the secretary general. Let us proceed to the second composition of the Interpol. This is the executive committee. This is the governing body in charge of supervising the execution of the General Assembly's decisions and the administration and work of the General Secretariat. The executive committee meets three times a year. The role of the executive committee is to supervise the execution of the decision of the General Assembly, prepare the agenda for sessions of the General Assembly, submit to the General Assembly, and any program of work of project which is considered useful and supervise the administration and work of the Secretary General. The composition of the Executive Committee, ladies and gentlemen, is as elected by the General Assembly. The Executive Committee has 13 members. 13 members. We have the President, so, ang president is siya yung namumuno sa executive committee. The president, there is only one and three vice presidents and nine delegates to have a total of 13 members. They are all from different countries and the geographical distribution is balanced. Okay? Mm. The tenure of service of the members of the executive committee the president is elected for four years and the vice president for three years. They are not immediately eligible for re election, either the same post or as delegates of the executive committee. So, mga members ng executive committee, maminsan lang, or minsan lang sila maging member ng executive committee, whatever position. So, ang president, four years ang term of office niya, ang mga vice president is three years. So ito yung mga current members ng executive committee. We have the president that is uh, uh, Raisi, vice president, and the delegates, nine. Yeah. So ito yung current president ng executive committee of Interpol. We have uh, President uh, Major General Ahmed Nasser. He is from the United uh, Arab Emirates. Yeah, Nasser al Raisi. Ang term year niya is na appoint siya noong 2021 at mag-e-end yung term niya sa 2025. Yeah. So, the Interpol's current president is Major General Ahmed Nasser al Rezi of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Mr. al Rezi was elected at the 89th General Assembly in Istanbul in November 2021 and will serve as president until 2025. What are the functions of the Interpol Executive Committee President? The President admit, uh, preside meetings of the General Assembly and Executive Committee and directs the discussion. Okay. The President also ensures that the activities of the organization are in conformity with the decision of the General Assembly and the Executive Committee. The President maintains as far as possible, direct and constant contact with the Secretary General of the organization. 
The role of the president is part-time and unpaid, with the holder retaining their full-time post within their national authority. So president sila sa uh, Interpol, wala naman silang ganong bayad. But still, kahit president sila sa Interpol or siya sa Interpol, still he is maintaining his post sa country of origin niya. So kung siya ay head ng uh, uh, police nila sa Interpol uh, sa kanilang country, then still they will retain their post. So remember this, uh, hindi ito ang uh, sibugarin, ito sibugarin. Uh? So who is the first and so far the only Filipino elected as president of Interpol and the executive committee? It was in the person of Jolly R. Pugarin. Yan siya. Ito siya. Hindi siya. Ha? Okay. So of course, additional and moreover, uh, the three vice presidents of as of 2022 of the executive committee, we have Sarka Habran Koba of the Zek Republic. We have Garba Baba Umar of Nigeria. Baka kilala nyo. Valdesi Urquiza of Brazil. So yan yung three vice presidents. Then yung nine delegates to complete the member of the executive committee. We have Juan Carlos Hernandez of Argentina, Benjen Hu of China, Michael Hoggs of the United States, Will Kerr of the United Kingdom, George Maini Kinoti of Kenya, uh, Maria Ariza Malo Sanchez of Spain, Selkuk Zevgel of Turkey, Paolo Pravin, Shina of India, and delegate for Africa as they count, okay? Next, composition of Interpol is of course uh, uh, the General Secretariat. The General Secretariat is runs, uh, the General Secretariat uh, uh, runs Interpol's day-to-day -day activities uh, to support member countries in their international policing. Kasi nga yung executive committee at general secretariat, uh, general assembly, they will only meet uh, twice or thrice a year as mentioned a while ago. Kaya ang uh, uh, nasa active mode day to day uh, to receive and provide services is the general secretariat headed by the secretary general. So the General Secretariat is located in Lyon, France and operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Interpol have six regional offices across the world and representative office to the United Nations in New York and the European Union in Brussels. So Merong representative of Interpol to the United Nations and in the European Union, the EU. Ang EU, meron siyang police, yun yung Europol. The General Secretariat, its headquarters in Lyon, France, coordinates much of the policing expertise. It also the administrative and logistical center of the organization is the General Secretariat. Okay. Next. This is the, you know, at least you can see the image of the Interpol uh, General Secretariat building. The six regional bureaus of Interpol, we have uh, in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires, in Cameroon, in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, the El Salvador, in Kenya, in Nairobi, and Zimbabwe. He proposed he is proposed by the executive committee and appointed by the General Assembly for a period of five years and may be reappointed once. Yeah. So ito lang, Secretary General pwede siyang ma-reappoint for another five years. Is the Secretary General. He engages with leaders at both policing and political levels to increase support for the organization advocating for Interpol's role within today's global security architecture and being a voice for policing matters on the world stage is the Secretary General. Siya ang mas active, no? Kasi siya ang uh, hands-on. 
He was appointed as Secretary General of Interpol in November 2014 and was reappointed in October 2019. He was appointed as Secretary General of Interpol in November 2014 yeah, and was reappointed in October 2019 to serve a second five year term. And he has more than 40 years of collection experience, is Jardin Stamp. So, maganda yung kanyang performance. That's why he was reappointed. You can see Jordan Stock, he is from Germany. Okay. The president of Interpol is uh, from uh, uh, country. Another composition of Interpol is the National Central Bureau. The National Central Bureau connects the national law enforcement of a member country with other countries and with the general secretariat by Interpol Secure Global Police Communication Network called I-24-7. So as I said a while ago, yung NCB, siya yung uh, part of the Interpol na, that connects member countries. Uh, whenever they request law enforcement assistance, then they can contact the NCB and remember this, ang NCB is nasa merong NCB ang mga member countries. Katulad natin sa Philippines, meron tayong in NCB Manila. Okay? So note, when a crime goes beyond the national jurisdiction, a country needs international support, uh, then they will contact uh, the NCB. Member, the NCB is a member country's focal point for all Interpol activities. Therefore, it is the heart of Interpol and how it works. The composition of an NCB varies from country to country, but they are usually part of the national police force and staffed by highly trained police officers. Sa atin sa Pilipinas, hindi under sa PNP ang ating NCB. No? And we will see that by and by as we go on. What is Interpol NCBs? This is the lifeblood of Interpol, contributing to Interpol's criminal databases and so forth and so on. Let us see our own Interpol. So ang sa atin sa Philippines, ang Interpol NCB natin is sa Manila, Philippines. Hindi sa Ipugao. So, what is Philippine Center on Transnational Crime or PCTC. This houses Interpol and CB Manila, so it's in charge, and is the national law enforcement agency which carries investigations beyond borders of the Philippines. So, hindi lang pang NCB ang uh, PCTC, pero it also the agency of the government of the Philippines that can investigate beyond the border of the Philippines. And dito transfer from PNP, NBI, Yung NCB natin dinala na under the jurisdiction of the PCTC. The PCTC priority crime areas that they do investigation is illicit trafficking, money laundering, terrorism, smuggling, piracy, and other crimes. Aside from uh, supervising our NCB. Who assists the PCTC? It is the 21 national law enforcement agencies of the Philippines. And what are these 21 national? We have uh, we have the PNP, the National Bureau, the NACT, yung mga iba dito na palitan na like PAOC PF, Presidential Anti-Smuggling, uh, NAPOLCOM, the ILG, DOJ, DOF, Department of Transportation, uh, NECA, that is our intelligence uh, agency, the AFP, the LTO, the NTC, the PSA, and other government agencies, there is 21 agencies, okay? Do the Philippines have jurisdiction over the NCB of the Philippines? Yeah, nasagot na yan because we discussed na kanina. The NCB for the Philippines is an interministerial entity, which is not a part of the Philippine National Police, but instead it is directly attached to the office of the president. Kasi nga ang PCTG, under the answer office of the president. So what is the what is executive order number 35 dated April 11, 2011? That is an order transferring the control and supervision of the Philippine Center on Transnational Crime from the Department of uh, 
imperial and local government to the office of the president to enhance coordination. Oh nga, kasi ang president, uh, marami siyang connection, uh, authority, therefore mas maganda so that he will he have the wide scope of command. So yan. Ang uh, PCTC organizational structure, ang head ng PCTC is the executive director. Also, the executive director is the head of NCB Manila, Interpol. Then, assisted by deputy director and so forth and so on. Next is, who is the head of the Interpol and CB Manila? I already mentioned that, the executive director of PCTC. Of course, a little background of Interpol, a little only. Uh, in 1914, diyan nagsimula ang uh, uh, pagbuo sa ideya on creating an international uh, criminal police uh, organization. It was held in Monaco, uh, attended by 14 countries, 1914. Then 1923, nasundan yan, creation of the International Criminal Police Commission. So, hindi muna ICP o no, na ICPC. Yan. So, Dr. Jonas Escobar is the first president of Vienna Police. He, he was the first in uh, uh, the initiative of this person. The next is 1927. Pakibasa lang ninyo yan. Uh, 1927, 1927, 1930, 1932, uh, 1935, 1938. Pakibasa yan. 1942. Yan. Okay. 1946. Diyan na buo yung Interpol na telegraphic address. Uh, aside from saying ICPO, tinatawag na lang Interpol. 1946 nagsimula yan. Then 1946, yan. Yan, yan lumabas yung notices. Uh, the first noted is first red notice for persons was in 1946. 1949, uh, United Nations got Interpol consular status. Then uh, 1956, pakipasa na lang yan. 1958, anong nangyari dyan? 1963, 1965. Then 1971, ano bang pangyayari dyan? 1972, 1982. 1989, alisin niyo yung 10 na yan. Uh, Interpol moves General Secretary at hanggang ngayon, yung Lion France and Headquarters. Then 1990, 1992. 1995, then 1998, then 2002. Yeah, so I hope those timeline, meron kayong natutunan dyan as to its history. 2003, 2004, pakibasa na lang yan. 2005, 2009, yeah, so I hope you, you were able to get some, no? So let us proceed further. Of course, additional uh, input that you should remember are the Interpol 195 member countries. Yeah, and sila, and sila, no? From A to Z. So A, Afghanistan, B, hanggang Burundi, C, hanggang uh, Cote d'Ivoire, D, hanggang Dominican Republic, then uh, followed by uh, uh, a to K, yan, Kyrgyzstan, yan yung mga countries, Jordan, uh, yan, pakipas na lang. Then L, we have Laos, then uh, yan yung, uh, no, Lao PDR, no, yan, P, yan, and then ang Philippines, okay, so Philippines is a member of Interpol, Portugal, and uh, Q, Qatar, may sana, R, hanggang Rwanda, S, hanggang Syria, then uh, T, T, T hanggang uh, Turkmenistan. Then walang W na country, walang X. Then Y is Yemen. Then Z is Zebra, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. All right? Next, when did the Philippines join the ICPO? June 12, 1952. Yeah. Interpol notices must be also considered in this discussion uh, because ito ang isa sa pinakamahalagang uh, initiative ng Interpol to help its member countries, the Interpol notices. 
These are international requests for cooperation or alerts, allowing police in member countries to share critical crime-related information. Who shall publish Interpol notices? It is again the General Secretariat through its General Secretary General uh, at the request of the NCB and are made available to all, our mem all member countries. Note, notices can also be used by United Nations, the ICT or the International Criminal Tribunal, then the ICC, the International Criminal Court, to seek person wanted for committing crimes. So, uh, these are the types of Interpol notices. They are color-coded, no? Red notice, that is for wanted person. So, kung uh, meron tayong hinahanap na fugitive, na tumakas sa China, then, then we can request Interpol to issue red notice. No? Yellow notice, missing person, kung may missing person. Blue notice, additional information. Black notice, if uh, uh, there is an identified bodies. Green notice, that is for warning uh, and intelligence. Yan, kung meron na uh, nasagap na intelligence ang uh, isang country, uh, pwede nila itong uh, ipadala sa Interpol through NCB para yung NCB mag-issue ng uh, green notice to that country. Example, merong uh, nakuha ang Israel ng uh, na intelligence na ang Philippines ay atakihin ng uh, uh, isang terrorist group, then uh, the Interpol will issue green notice. Then orange notice, if there is imminent threat, then uh, purple notice is modus operandi, then another is Interpol UN Security Council special notice uh, for groups and individuals subject to UN or UNC, United Nations Security Council sanction. So for you to more understand, ito sila. Red notice is to seek location and arrest. Yellow notice to help locate missing. Then blue notice to collect additional information. Black notice, yan. Then green notice, okay. Orange notice, pakibasa na lang yan. Purple notice and Interpol national security. Okay. So that is the end of my discussion as far as uh, uh, Interpol or ICPO is concerned. So I hope uh, you use this material wisely for your assistance and guidance. Thank you and see you in the last discussion.